doing 97 and 98 today these will go fast and they just go faster uh when i'm going right off right out of the book here so um if we need to spend more time on these things when i get back that's fine too but they're pretty simple concepts so hopefully you guys can figure enough of this out and do your homework so we're going to talk about concentric circles, which are basically circles inside of circles. All right. But not just any circle inside of circles. They have to share the same center. So they have the same center, but different radii. Okay. If they had the same radii, then it, they'd be the same circle. So they wouldn't be concentric circles. They'd be the same congruent circles inside of each other. But so... Determine when two circles are concentric. Obviously, A is not concentric because it does not have the same center. Uh, B is concentric. It has the same center. C is not concentric. Um, but there's parts of C that are concentric. So does that make sense? Same center, different radii. So the circles inside of circles. All right, so you guys remember the equation of a circle is right here. We talked about this in my last class, actually, and uh, I think they forgot how to determine the center. So where's the center of this circle? Do you guys remember where the center is? How do you determine the center of the circle on a coordinate plane? I guess you guys forgot too. Yeah. So this center, center remember is whatever you're subtracting from X comma, whatever you're subtracting from Y. So there's the center, is that HK. All right, so equations of a co concentric circle, find the equations of the concentric circle centered at negative two, three, so we know that x minus or x plus two, because whatever you're subtracting, so if it's negative two, plus y minus three squared, and then we have to determine the radius. <coughs> Describe how, so both circles have center of negative two, three, so blah, blah, blah. So basically the only difference between these circles is gonna be this right side, so the radius squared. All right, so it looks like the smaller one is three units long. So this is the smaller circle. Then three units long is gonna be three squared, which is nine. And let's see, going from negative two all the way to looks like negative 11 maybe. So those are nine units long. So the big circle is going to be the same thing, x plus 2 parentheses squared plus y minus 3 parentheses squared equals 9 squared. Okay? So here's our two equations. So pretty, uh, pretty self-explanatory. All right, here's a new word. The annulus is the region between the two concentric circles. So it's the, kind of like the crust of the pizza, right? So the annulus is the region between the two concentric circles. Uh, to find the area of the annulus, just find the area of the big circle and subtract the area of the small circle. That's it. This is what we did in like pre-algebra, trying to find the area of the shaded region, okay? So to do that, how do you find the area of this circle? Well, with their, they don't give us the radius of the big circle, but we can figure it out. If this is six plus three more, so the area of big is going to be uh, pi 9 squared minus the area of the small, which is pi 6 squared. So the area of annulus is going to be 81 minus 36 which is 45 pi. 
Okay, so nothing too new here. We've we've actually done this before. You guys remember doing like uh, finding the probability of getting a bullseye. So you have to find the area of the whole thing and then the area of the bullseye and then the probability would be area of the bullseye over the area of the whole thing. S similar kind of concepts with this unit, okay? So annulus is a new word. Make sure you have that written down in your notes. Uh, you guys have this text so you can copy that down. So uh, just remember it's like the crust of the pizza. All right, oh, look at this, the bullseye target. Probability. So same thing. I didn't even know this was going to be there. Okay. You can find the, there's lots of little rings here. Finding the probability. All right, guys, that's 97. 98. Let's move on. Yeah, I told you it'd be quick. All right, so we talked about the law of signs before. Remember the law of signs is nice because you can use this to find missing components of a non-right triangle. Did somebody ask a question? Okay. All right, wow, it picks up a lot. So remember the law of signs is like sine of A or sine of sine of A over A equals sine of B over B equals sine of C over C, where C A is the opposite side of angle A, B is the opposite side of angle B. The law of cosines works a little different. Um, it's a little bit more complicated, but it looks kind of like the Pythagorean theorem, but Pythagorean theorem only works with right triangles, so they had to modify this a little bit. Now, I can show you kind of how this formula was derived, and if I come back and you want to know that stuff, I can, I can show it to you, but this is basically the law of cosines, all right? So right this down right here. So I'll give you a minute to write down the law of cosines. You're going to need this when you do your homework assignment. So this is the law of cosines. And then we are going to find some values here. So take a minute and write that down. One person. Okay. So, so Tori is giving up. Um, yeah. Oh my. Yeah. On, on life. Hey, Tanner, could you close the door, please? She is. Okay, um, so we're going to use this to find the missing thing here. Now, law of signs, if we wanted to use law of signs, we would need, um, we would probably need another angle. Okay, so you use the law of signs when you're given um, a couple angles or at least an angle. So an angle goes at the side or at least an angle with the opposite side included. So the law of signs wouldn't work here. So we're kind of forced to use this law of cosines. So we're missing C and it doesn't really matter which letter goes with which. It doesn't matter at all. Okay, so we're just going to use this guy. So C squared equals a squared, which is basically one of these. So we're going to say 60 squared plus B squared, which is 80 squared minus two times 60 times 80 times the cosine of C, which is cosine of 22. All right. So if we do all this math, 3,600 
plus 6,400 minus 4,800, 9,600 times cosine of 22. Well, cosine of 22, you have to do all that math together and then subtract it from uh, this, which is basically 10,000 minus this whole thing. And you get approximately uh, 33.2. Okay, so this, this works and it's not even a right triangle, okay? So this is the power of trigonometry. Um, so these are helpful to, to use. And really, this is all the same thing. It's basically the square of one side is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides minus uh, twice the product of those two sides times the cosine of whatever side you're looking for. Okay, so they use A, B, and C just because it's easier to write down but you can, really, uh, you can really assign any value to A, B, and C. So just the, the important thing to remember is that um, the cosine, whatever side you're looking for, you need the angle of that because you need to be able to find the cosine of that, okay? All right, so find the missing angle. So this is use, doing the same thing, but now we're missing the angle, so we can still use the law of cosines. So let's see, we're trying to find C here. We're trying to find this angle, okay? So let's just use that same formula we did. So C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of C. So we're looking for this. This is what we wanna, wanna do, okay? So we're gonna plug in all our values. So 62 squared equals 57 squared plus 32 squared minus two times 57 times 32, a lot of math, times the cosine of C, okay? So if you do this, you have to get all, I mean, you do all this math and then you have to get cosine of C by itself so see, now we're down to here. We end up with negative numbers, but that's okay because to get cosine of C by itself, you divide both sides by negative three, six, four, eight. And a negative divided by a negative gives you a positive. Okay, so cosine of C is approximately 0.118. So how do you find C? Well, then you do the inverse cosine. Remember doing that? So on your calculator, uh, if you have a normal calculator, you can just do cosine inverse. You might have to push the second button to get to the, the other options on your calculator. But if you cos inverse cosine both sides, and on an iPhone, remember, you would, you would type in 0.118 and then remember, you have to turn it on its side and then hit the second button and then where the cosine button used to be. And now it says cosine negative one. Okay. And then you get C. So C equals 83.22 degrees to the nearest hundredth. So this is approximately, not equals. Okay. So the measure of angle C equals 83-ish point two two. Okay. So that is using the law of cosines to either find an angle or find the side, okay? All right, now this is using the law of cosines with the right triangle, which uh, like, why would we wanna do that? Well, we would wanna do that because it'd be interesting to find out the angles and you could. Well, you, first you could just use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what Y is, but look what they did. Um, I don't know why they did it like this, but I mean, you could technically do that 12, 12 squared plus eight squared equals Y squared, but they use the law of cosine. So cosine of 90 degrees is actually zero. So see how this works out? Because now if you, 
are getting zero, then you're subtracting zero. Look at that. That's just the Pythagorean theorem. So that's, that was basically all this examples to show you that you don't need to use the law of cosines because this is a right triangle. So you can just use the Pythagorean theorem. All right. So um, same kind of thing there. You can find the angle though here, which is kind of nice. Well, if you find obviously this angle here, you don't know it's a right triangle, but you can use the law of cosines to figure it out because look, you have all these sides. So um, if you apply the uh, law of cosines, you end up getting zero here. So cosine of M equals zero. Well, there's only one angle whose cosine is zero and that's 90 degrees. Okay, but if you inverse cosine zero in your calculator, you'll get 90, okay? Um, so that's it, that's the law of cosines. <laughs> Again, very short lesson. Um, so enjoy your sopapillas, whatever you got brought. I don't know what those were. Don't worry. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. If you had come, I would have given you some. I know, I know. And I, know, I appreciate I that. I thought you would be here. So I was like, oh, I'll bring you back some sopapillas. Yeah. Are you going to be here on Thursday? No. No, I'll be here on Tuesday. Yay. Not that you're not wonderful, and not that you're wonderful on Zoom, but we all make it. Uh, that's okay. That's so not true. But I love you as a substitute teacher. It's so great. You were in Rubber's class, and you've been in my art class. <laughs> what? I'm all over the place. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> She's out of control. She's everywhere. <laughs> all right. You guys have any questions? No. All right. Teacher. Um, hey, uh, <laughs> You got, if you haven't seen the trailer yet for the. Oh, uh, I did. I did. I saw the trailer. I did. It's so cute. I did not watch it. Wait, I can't see myself. I'm just kidding. I just can't. I only, it, it was a really, it was a really short trailer. So I, we, I just showed the detectives and then that end okay. scene, but. Okay. Anyway. It's so fun too. I've been so out of it. I'm kind of mentally checked out for the year. <laughs> I am for the right. year. For your life. I like I'm going to start oh, drooling on the desk. In this class, I like worked hard. You know, I got good grades. And I was like, great. Okay, I'm ready. I've, I've earned my break for the year. Yes, you did. Good job. All right, like guys. Um, I'm going to sign off. Well done. Black